Hey, hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia, and today I'm taking a look at the latest printing of this card game filled with monsters and treasures called Dungeon Raiders. In this card game, the players are going to be competing with one another, trying to be the ones to exit from the dungeon with the most gold, but also making sure that they are not the one leaving that is the most wounded. For that, we'll eliminate you from competing for the winning position. It's a simultaneous selection card game in which you'll encounter multiple cards. You'll play one from your hand to decide the strength you are using for that encounter, and then reveal those and see what happens. Let me give you a look at how this goes in just one second. I do want to mention there have been, as I said, previous versions of this game. One of those has, in fact, been reviewed by our very own Tom Vassell many years ago. But this is a brand new printing of the game from a different company, and so I thought I would take a look at it and let you know what I thought of it. So, here we go. To set up the game, the first thing we'll do is prepare the dungeon deck of cards here, which is made up of uh, a door to a specific dungeon, followed by five random rooms in that dungeon, and then again, door, five cards, that repeats five times, and at the end, a random boss out of a selection of a few. Put that back face down, you set up the special cards over here, and then you give each player a random character. So for example, I might be playing uh, the explorer there. And the next player might be the thief, player after that might be the knight, for example. And then I get whatever I begin with as denoted on my card. So if I am the explorer, I would get three coins to begin the game, I get a torch to begin the game, and I begin with two wounds already. On top of that, everyone gets a hand of five cards, numbered one through five. And so those five plus the torch, that's my opening hand in the game, and these goodies. And the other players get their coin, sword, and one wound, two coins, a key, and two wounds, and so on. And these are special abilities, which I'll get to in a little bit. Once you've taken what you need to take, you are ready to begin the game. And you open up the first dungeon. So by doing that, you flip over the first card. It's going to tell you which rooms are revealed and which rooms are in the dark and you set them in a line next to the door here. So for example, first one is revealed, and it's a vault that's going to allow the players to try to uh, uh, capture some of these goodies. Next one is a treasure, which is going to possibly lead to some coins. The next two are face down, and then the last one is another treasure room. And we will put that there, set the rest of the deck aside for now. You are ready to begin. We are going to be going through these rooms in sequence, discovering what's in them if they're face down, and playing cards from our hands to activate those rooms. Uh, right now, by the way, and really any time a player could, play a torch to look at every face down room right now, and then put those back face down. So... Uh, during the vault step here, everyone is going to pick a card from their hand, play it face down, and then everyone reveals the card they played. Uh, whatever number you played in the room, in this case, denotes what it is you get. So for example, I played a 2, I would get a crystal ball, and I would take that, add it to my hand. Crystal ball in this case allows me to play it, and instead of choosing what my card is now, I get to see everyone else's, and then I pick the number I want, giving, of course, up the uh, crystal ball there. The next one in the treasure room, everyone is going to play a card. Same thing, by the way, this having been played stays out. So everyone plays a card during the treasure uh, room. And so let's say this is my card, these are the, my opponent's cards. They are all revealed, and whoever played the strongest card gets the treasure. If it's a room with several levels, then the strongest player gets the three coins in this case. Second strongest gets the two coins. And again, these cards would stay out for those players. And we would go on to the next room, which we flip over and discover. In this case, it's a trap, a spike trap. And it lets us know over here who it targets and what happens to that player. In this case, whoever has the fewest wounds is the target. And after everyone plays one card simultaneously, if a 5 or a 4 was played, that player takes 2 wounds. 
If a three was played, that player takes one wound. If only ones and twos were played, that player is safe. And we go on to the next room. This is a monster, a zombie. And a zombie has, down here, the number of wounds to be inflicted and the target a strength that must be beaten if we intend to keep it from hurting anyone. Uh, once again, every player is going to play a card face down. They are all revealed, and the sum of the cards is totaled. For, let's say, three players, we need a total of 11 in this case. If that total is reached, the uh, zombie is finished, and we move on. If it is not reached, then it is going to hurt a player at the table, and the targeted player or players uh, would be the ones that played the lowest card. And they would take, in this case, one wound, all right? And then again, there's a treasure room. Once this is all done, these cards are removed from the game. The players get their own cards back into their hands, and we open up the next room by bringing this back over here, flipping over the top one, taking a look at the way the cards are laid out. So open, closed, open, closed, closed, and continuing until we reach the final boss and the whole game is over. The special cards, as you saw, Torch and the Crystal Ball have already explained. The Sword is a Strength 5 cards, a card for a combat. And the Key is a Strength 5 card that counts towards opening up uh, uh, treasure rooms. So if you play that in a treasure room, it's as though you played this one here. And that's pretty much it. Once the game is completely over, first thing you're going to do is figure out who has the most wounds. That player is eliminated from the game. They cannot possibly win. If there's a tie, all those players are eliminated. And then we count up our score of uh, our number of treasure here. And the player who is escaping with their life and with the most coins is the winner of the game. That's really all there is to it. Besides that, there is a variant which uses this map card here that allows the players to play in sequence as opposed to all the cards simultaneously. And this would move around in the game. You would on your turn, instead of just playing out a card like this and then everyone revealing it, you'd actually, okay, I'm gonna play a three, next player, okay, well, I'll play a four, and so on. You can choose to play whichever way you like, considering, of course, that playing with this mode will make the game a decent amount longer. And that's all there is to it. So let's go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of this game. And that is Dungeon Raiders. Let's talk about it. I'm going to start off my chat here with thematic ties. So normally I'm not a fan of this sort of generic fantasy dungeon crawling, you know, uh, setting, but... When that setting is treated in a, in a tongue-in-cheek manner, then I'm a little more forgiving on it. Uh, and this is certainly uh, that way. It is a game that does not take itself seriously. The illustrations themselves are silly. The, uh, the concept is very light-hearted, and so I think it fits well what you are doing in the game and does not detract. Do I love the theme? No. I think it's fine, though. And it works because it is sort of a cartoony interpretation of a theme that has been done to death. But I would not be upset if this was pretty much any other interesting theme. Um, still, I can't fault it for doing what it does and doing so in a humorous way. The aesthetics, component quality, the artwork, things like that. I think it's fantastic. I love the, uh, the packaging. The artwork in the game is very, very good. The symbology and all of that is very clear. Everything is well thought out and put together. It's a small game, but they, but there was still room for them to have fumbled it, and they didn't. This is well thought out, well implemented, well laid out. I enjoy the look and the, uh, the quality of the game. Replayability, does it scale well? Are there new things to discover, things like that? I think... Um, you are going to see the very same things every game. So the, re the, the uh, replayability I don't think is supremely high. I think you will, you know, sort of, unless you adore the game, I think you will get bored of the game after uh, a few plays. And as I'll be talking about in one second here under game length, I do find it to be repetitive in and of itself in a single play because you are doing the same things over and over. There's only a few special cards. 
you won't necessarily get all the special cards. And so, looking at it from the monsters and sort of dungeon point of view, yeah, there's some stuff in there. You'll have the, the traps, you'll have the final boss, which you pick one out of, you know, about ten or so, so that's nice. But there's not a ton of replayability in the box, I would say. Game length. Interesting the whole time. Does it get repetitive? I think the game is not long per se, but I do find that, you know, playing one numbered card uh, five times in the hand, which means you do it 25 times or so. I mean, some of those times you'll replace it with a, a key or a sword. But you are doing that same thing, basically, 25 times in the game. Uh, yeah, I could get a little repetitive. It could get a little samey towards the end of the game. This is not the kind of game I would ever play twice in a row, for example. That's just not the feel. I, I don't think the second time immediately back-to-back -back would be particularly different from the first time. Even the characters that you begin with, while they are different from one another, they, they are only different in a very minor way. So, um, you know, there's that. Uh, the ease of play. Is it fiddly? Are there any extraneous rules? Is it easy to teach? Coupled with the the um, fact that you are sort of doing the same things largely over and over again, you do get a lot of rules simplicity. The game is very easy to teach. It is one that you could play with just about anybody. You know, if someone uh, in your family or, groups of, or, or group of friends enjoys the dungeon crawl feel, and they want a game that isn't just a silly take that game, but also is not a very complex, you know, time sink of a dungeon crawl, then this is probably a happy medium, you know. You could play, like I said, with just about anybody. The rules are straightforward, they're well laid out, and it's thematic enough to involve you in this setting. Uh, lastly, tactics and strategy. Um, is it too lucky? Is it balanced? Is there interesting choices throughout the game? I think the game is short, simple, straightforward. The luck should technically affect everybody about the same. Having a torch at the right time and being able to look at, say, three face-down cards, that feels good. Let's you feel different from the other players, you know, like you get a special power. Uh, the game, uh, it's fun to be able to manage... The wounds versus the coins, you know, I like that uh, aspect of the game. You want to get a lot of money, you want to get a lot of special cards, but if one of those cards comes up that might let you heal, maybe you should heal. You might be the one that's wounded the most, so you might want to do that instead of gaining something. Just stay in the running, you know. So that's interesting. But yeah, the game is, it's light. I, you know, it's, it's a fluffy game for the most part. One that still manages to be, as I said, thematic and engaging and interesting, if a little repetitive, but one that is, you know, fun and it's it's attractive and neat to, to play and enjoy. So overall, I do like this game. I, I feel like I'm coming across much more, uh, in a much more critical manner than I intend to. I like the game. I think it's neat. It's well produced. It's got a cool theme, it's one that's going to appeal to a lot of people, but yes, it is repetitive, yes, it is the same game just about from, from play session to play session with minor differences, and, you know, you're going to get sort of worn out of it if you play a lot of it in a short uh, time span. But I think there's a lot of people out there who are going to enjoy this one. I enjoyed myself. I think I might hang on to it for a while, you know play it a few more times, and kind of move on once I feel like I've uh, I've gotten what there is to be had with, say, my family and, you know, largely non-gamer friends. I think that's who this is good for. So, if you've got that audience out there or you yourself enjoy the sort of game, I would certainly recommend you check it out. It's good stuff, fun, uh, bright, and uh, it does not take itself too seriously, which for me goes a long way. So there you go. That is Dungeon Raiders. Check it out, add it to your collection perhaps, and thank you for tuning in and checking this out with me. I'm Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.